Welcome to Off The Cut, a podcast where we talk about building, making, and answering all of your questions. I'm Eric from Spensley Design Co. And I'm Zach from Zach Builds. If you have a question that you would like us to answer on air, you can send it to offthecutpodcast at gmail.com. You can find both of us on YouTube, Instagram, and unfortunately, because we have to keep up with kids, you can find us on TikTok too. All right, now let's get into the show. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Off The Cut, episode 44. We're up in Canada. Today is known as Tuesday, December 20th, 2022. But here in Ohio, today is respectfully dedicated. Again, this is not a food, but I'll take it because there's food in it. Sangria. Yeah, there is food in it. Yeah. Uh, I like a good sangria. I also like, you know, like you go, speaking of like alcoholic drinks that have food floating in them, you know, when you go and you get a big Caesar and they have like a slice of cake and a hamburger and a pickle and a slice of bacon all jabbed onto the end of a, a skewer and in your Caesar. What in the hell is a Caesar? This has got to be, a, this is, has to be a, a translation thing. What? Uh, it's like kind of like a Bloody Mary. But oh, spicier. okay, okay, okay. Yeah, what's yeah, the yeah. difference between a Caesar and a Bloody Mary? Hell you don't know what a man. Caesar is? What? I've never heard of that. Really? Is this a weird Canadian th- American thing? Hey, I don't know. But real quick, maybe it's just me, but your audio might be coming in a little hot. So anybody Ooh. listening, oh, 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 is it? I got, I got excited. Let me turn this down. I'm yelling. I get I get fired up about Caesars. Okay, yeah, we're good. I was going to say <laughs> okay. it was it was clipping a little bit, and I okay. just wanted to make sure we had the best audio possible. But Bloody Mary and Caesar very similar. One has clam um, juice, maybe. Bloody Marys have tomato juice, while mm-hmm. Caesars make use of clamato, which is a clam and tomato juice. Oh, okay, clam juice. What in the hell, dude? You got to have a Caesar. It's it's great. <sighs> So, Bloody Marys are kind of like the reverse of how I feel about bourbon. And and let me explain this. Okay, okay, please do. I love bourbon, but I hate that I love bourbon. Oh, Because it's okay. like, oh, you classic guy, he likes his bourbon, mm. you know? Yeah, do you ever feel bad about like those like things that you're like... Uh- you lo- you you truly like them so much, but people are like, oh, you're such a man. You like that thing, like you, you IPAs. Feel like yeah, you feel like you're playing yeah. into a stereotype, but you're like, I genuinely enjoy it though. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, okay. that's so. The Bloody Mary for me is the reverse. Bloody Marys are cool to like. Oh, but I but- try them every time, and I don't like them. Okay, we need to get you a Caesar and okay. see if you like it. It's like it's saltier and it's like uh, it's kind of, it's spicier. It's hard to describe, but it's it's a good time. So what do we need to do at WorkbenchCon? We need to go to Caesars. Popeyes. Yeah, we yeah. Need to get Caesars. Do you think there is a Popeyes that serves Caesars? That would really that would expedite the whole thing. They serve them in the uh, lobby of your building. Yeah, may, they might. They may very well. <laughs> Can you bring your own Caesar? What's their alcohol policy? <laughs> yeah, have, do you not have, like, what is... So there's, like, Clamato's is a brand that's... I guess maybe it's huge in Canada, but it's, like... Does it come in a bag? <laughs> no, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Clamato's... Milk joke. Yeah, okay. Here, hold on. Let me see if I can hold this up to the camera. Come on, load you piece of crap. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever By seen that Mott's. before? Huh? No. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what Mott's is, Wait. But... Hold on. Bud Light makes... They have a Caesar? Called Bud Light Chilada. Oh. Made with Clamato. It's a premium light lager with natural flavors and vegetable juice. Oh, yeah. I'm looking at that. I don't what know that I would drink that. God's name? I don't know that I would drink that. I mean, it's made by Bud Light, so it's got to be just awful. <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay i'll try it i'll try it yeah okay i'll see if i can sneak some across the border for you so you can get the real stuff i tell you what why i wait and you why i wait for you and scott to get to the airport for workbench con i'll just be getting blasted at the <laughs> at the airport bar drinking bloody mary's <laughs> perfect perfect and as we discussed no matter what time you're there It'll be okay. Like yeah. that's uh, international waters, baby. It's all. Yeah. It's all good. good. <laughs> Even though it's the same country, yeah, it's just, exactly. It's yeah. a couple hours away from me. Yeah. Uh, 
Well, you know who else enjoys getting absolutely blasted at random times of the day at the airport? Our new patrons? Our new patrons. So, first one, we got a rigid fan. Oh, okay. Andrew Richard. Uh Uh-oh. Two first names. Yeah, th- Andrew. I'm- so you're probably thinking, I thought I lost you for half a second, but we're good. I no, just, no, we're I got to learn to just let it roll when we have hookups. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually know Andrew Richard. And you're probably thinking, oh. guy with two first names, don't trust him, right? Yeah, I am. So do you remember when you were a kid, when it was probably like third, fourth grade, um, you had like, you had like your band you had like your orchestra and like piano and they're like try to get you to pay, play the violin right mm-hmm. well unfortunately i had to play the violin okay because my parents had a violin and oh, they're lucky yeah that was the like the nerdiest one you could play right <laughs> yeah um, yeah and so i took the violin or whatever and i remember there was this one day that I went into you know school. You had your violin. You like got to school in the morning. You put your lunchbox in some like dumb tote, and everybody's lunch got smashed. And then like your teacher took it down the cafeteria. But you also had your violin. Uh huh. And I remember I took my violin down in the morning, and then I get to class, and and Andrew Richard was in that class, and. I remember he goes to pull his violin off the uh, little shelf Mm -hmm. and just smashed it everywhere. Right? Yours or his? His. It wasn't mine, thankfully. And I remember, like, the the orchestra teacher lost his effing mind. Like, thought this was the end of the world. Like, somebody had died. And so he picks up the phone and he calls Andrew's mom. And goes, Mrs. Richards, we have had an accident. And his mom was on the phone. And it was speaker. And she was going off on him like, oh, my God. Did Andrew get hurt? Did he get run over by a car? Understandably. Yeah, as you would. And the teacher goes, no. His violin broke. And then his mom says... Why the hell did you call me about some dumbass violin? <laughs> so that's how I know Andrew Richard. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. And we also have... <laughs> did you believe that for a second? No, I mean, I, I sussed about two seconds into that thing. Yeah. I was like, oh, he's doing another one of his tall tales. Yeah. It's almost as good as our intro for the after show. Which exactly. I hope you've got one this time. Oh, oh, always. Okay. But we also have a new top tier patron, a cocker this week. We got whoa, no way. Yeah, Luke Schmidt, which and he's watching. He's on after or er, after show, live uh, stream. Live right stream. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so Luke, I gotta tell you, we we were chatting on Instagram a little bit last week, and I, you know how people's little photos on Instagram are like the size mm-hmm. of like a BB. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that his photo was like a like an emoji character. Oh, okay. And so I'm seeing this teeny tiny thumbprint and I'm like this is the goofiest looking dude I've ever seen. <laughs> he looks like a freaking cartoon character. <laughs> Until I find I finally looked at it close enough and I was like it is a cartoon <laughs> character. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were transitioning into another tall tale there. <laughs> no, I mean, I could. So Luke was actually messaging me um, about VPN services. Oh. So he had se- he'd seen, he was like, I see a lot of YouTubers do uh, Nord VPN, the mm-hmm. Express VPN, you know. Surfshark. All yeah, the, Surfshark. All the good ones. I did one for Aura, and he goes... So I've really recently gotten into black market cat trading, and <laughs> he's looking for a VPN to do this. So he's like, "Would you recommend Aura?" And I was just, and I told him, I was like, "Man, I looked into it. I knew it was a legitimate company. 
mm-hmm. but I definitely do not know enough about all that technology to tell you which VPN is like the best yeah. of the best. Yeah. So please do not sign up for mine. One, because I no longer get a kickback. Oh, and, that ended? That was for like a limited time only? Yeah. Oh, Allegedly. Um, <laughs> uh, so I was like, dude, you just do your own research. I am not somebody that I that you would want to interview about what yeah, VPN I'm not your get. internet security expert, no. unfortunately. No. But you got to be honest about things. So yeah. now our cockers that get their names read every single week, our patrons, supporters. We got Luke Schmidt, Jason Price, Derek Jennings at P. Cant Redesigns, mm-hmm. uh, Corey Duvall, which, yeah. by the way, as a Christmas bonus to us, he was, gave us a Christmas bonus, updated what? his uh, support, his oh. pledge amount. What? Wait, 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 wait. Is he a power cocker now? He's not a power cocker, but he upgraded, he, you know, bumped up his pledge. Oh, what a you can do that? You can, like, what, is he between two tiers now? I guess. I have, I got no idea how this works. Patreon is the weirdest platform that exists. There's all sorts of functionality on there and that I have no idea how it works. Exactly. That's why I always <laughs> tell people. I'm like, send me a message. Uh, I I think I get to everything. Half the time, it doesn't send me an email if somebody does. So really, honestly, the best way to get a hold of me is just email me. Uh, and the best way to get a hold of me is to message me on the Discord, which we should also be promoting more because it's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. I like so- seeing – I get I get a little notification anytime somebody new joins, and uh, it always brightens my day a little bit. Nice. Yeah. So our other cocker, we got Scott Eastman at EC's Woodshop and sure do. our turn. creme de la creme, <laughs> the power cocker formerly known as Wes, who is also in the live stream right now, I saw. Oh, nice. Ah, man, it's really eating me up that I can't see the chat right now. Yeah. Well, for everybody else who wants to know what the hell that was all about, uh, <laughs> we every episode we announce our top tier patrons who help support this podcast because... We don't make any money on this other than yeah. through Patreon. So, Actually, every- you know, I, sorry, I wanted to extend a quick thank you to our patrons because we recently upgraded to using a different service for recording our podcast. You're absolutely right, and they and, are making it happen. <laughs> exactly, they are making it happen. It's uh, you know, it's outside of going to workbench. It's like and the logo and a couple other things. There, there are a few things, but we've it's the first thing where we've like invested the money back into trying to make the podcast better, I guess. Absolutely. This thing's yeah. several hundred dollars for us to record on now. Yeah, um, exactly. But yeah, so all those patrons help support the podcast. They also get access to the after show, which is basically an entire another podcast. So if you like yeah. listening to this nasally drone, we've got mm-hmm. another one for you too. Or this one. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> sometimes the the after show is longer than the main show. It doesn't always happen, but sometimes it does. Yeah. Which, by the way, I know we usually start the after show with airing of grievances, but mm-hmm. I have a grievance that I need to air because I'm pretty sure we talked about this in the main show, and the people need to know, Zach. Are you going to reverse admitting you were wrong? No, but I do have okay. something I need to admit that I was wrong about okay. later. Okay, okay, Um I recall around Halloween time... Mm-hmm. We were talking, you know, it's peak spooky season, right? Yeah. We were talking about movies and TV shows. Correct. And if I recall correctly, you told me you've got to watch that Netflix show called Cabinet of Curiosities. No, 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 no. I don't think so. Oh, was it someone else? Uh, we talked about Cabinet of Curiosities, but okay. I'm pretty sure I didn't recommend it because I really didn't like it. <laughs> Okay, that's what I was going to say. Dude, that was one of the worst shows I've seen in a long time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I watched, like, the first episode, and I was like, what is this? Like, I couldn't imagine, like, I couldn't believe what I was watching. I was like, all right, let me watch another one of these ones and see. And it was second one was just as bad. I was like, okay, well, that's it for me. I'm out. <laughs> so the first one, for anybody who doesn't know what it is, it's basically like an anthology series of, like, um horror stories or whatever what was the first one maybe so, i did like the first one the first one started out fantastic it was like this dude who worked in like a storage unit facility 
And oh, okay. Like, that was the first one. Yeah, he'd like buy these storage units and then... I mean, I'm not ruining anything because nobody should be watching the show. Yeah, we're, we're, we're saving you a yeah. horrible viewing experience here. So, like, there's a bunch of uh, a bunch of nonsense that occurs and you're like, oh, man, this is really kind of pull me in. It's pretty interesting. But then at the end, basically, he gets into the storage facility and there's, like, a shrine in the back of it that's got some stupid little, like, monster thing and it basically just comes and attacks him. But you're missing, like, the worst part about that show was that there was like he buys the storage unit and then somehow they find a way to waste 30 minutes and then he gets True. into the storage unit and there's a monster it's like did we really True. need all that stuff in the middle like couldn't they just like gone in and opened it up it was, yeah it was annoying it was bad and typically when you're on netflix and it's like oh this is the top 10 in the u.s like it's usually a pretty decent show you would think you would not think. so much this one Turns mm. out the masses have bad taste. Mm. 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 Well, speaking of masses, uh, mm-hmm. what have you been amassing your time on the, within the last week, Zach? I'm really, really cranking down and cranking. Crank it, hey oh yeah, hey oh. Uh, I'm really, I was really down beating this thing off all day, and I'm trying to get my Christmas special out before Christmas. So, Ooh, uh, so yeah. that's what I'm working on. I think it's fingers crossed it's done. I'm just uh, I was in the middle of rendering the the video, and then we started up the podcast. So I had to pause it. So hopefully, for anybody on my Patreon, they'll get the video later tonight. Hopefully, if everything right goes on. according to plan, and then the actual it'll go live on YouTube tomorrow. Oh, you're gonna do it tomorrow. I got it, guys. I want to get it out before Christmas because there's a giveaway portion to the video. Oh, okay. okay. My whole thing to, to recap: giving away five thousand dollars worth of tools. There was one tool at the end of the video that was left over, so I said, you know what? I'll just do a little giveaway within the video. So just comment on the video, and then I'll send you. A, uh, well, I'll pick one person and send them out a five hundred dollar laser level. If I recall correctly, you can use TubeBuddy. Pro, whatever the hell the most expensive one that we have is. Oh. Um, that has a comment picker fit functionality, I think. Oh, okay, cool. Thank you. I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you put in like a, like a specific keyword. Did you have somebody like put like a keyword in or something? Like, uh, I didn't. All right, I'll figure it out. I'll, I'll check it out. I'll figure it out. I mean, let's be real. How are all giveaways done? You kind of <laughs> scroll down, you go, that guy. Unless yeah. they're in like Singapore and then you're like, Mm, yeah, I'm not paying to ship to them. <laughs> you know what I usually do is I usually load up all the comments and then I hand the phone to my girlfriend yeah. and I just say spin the, the wheel, same pick way. a name. That way I'm like completely yeah. out of it. Yeah. Yeah. The only the only caveat I have is typically if it's like especially on Instagram, if it's a woodworking thing, mm-hmm. like a I don't know, say it were a, a table saw, and you look on this person's page and they have nothing related to woodworking, I'm like are you just kind of like a like a giveaway leech? Well, yeah. So, okay. So, it's funny you say that because I remember early on, back when people used to do giveaways on Instagram, got a nice uh, free bubbly. Yeah. Well, this nice. is a oh, cro- no, I'm going through one. my back stock. This is a yeah. <laughs> um, I remember doing a giveaway way, way back in the day. And one, I picked a person's name at random. And then I went to their page. And literally all it was was them. You know, people used to, it back in the day, Back in the way, way back Instagram, you have to like repost the giveaway oh, yeah. post on your own feed. Oh, and I yeah. went to this person's feed, and it was literally just them reposting different giveaway things. I was like, nah, I'm gonna move on to the next person. Yeah, yeah. I don't blame you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. Does can sure that person would get pissed off if they were listening to this? But let's be real. Does that person ever was. actually think they're gonna win one with that I'm, kind of stuff? I think, well, the way it looked to me was like, this person literally realized, hey, people are giving away stuff on Instagram. I'm just going to do all of them. I'm going to spend all yeah. day. I'm going to sit there. I'm going to like look at hashtag giveaway or whatever. Right. And uh, yeah, and then just try and do them all. So, Which, yeah. by the way, we should cover that very quickly. Anyone who is starting to get started in social media and thinks good, that doing giveaways is a good idea, Don't. do not do it. For multiple reasons. One, it's just, it doesn't work. <laughs> no. It's a it's just a bad form of promotion. You get a bunch of people who really don't care about your content. They're just there for giveaways. So it's going to yep. kill your engagement. So yep. it's just bad idea at that level. But now also, there's all sorts of like pernicious scams that happen. Yep. So 
you do a giveaway, some scammer will register a fake account. They'll steal your profile picture. They'll try and get as close to your name as possible. And then they will start messaging every single person that entered your giveaway. And they will say, hey, you won. Send me like $50 to release it or whatever their scam is. I don't really know what their scam is. I think it's usually like to pay for shipping or something like that is what they say. Exactly. Something like that. So uh, it's it it becomes more headache than it's worth. The last time I did a giveaway, uh, which was a long time ago, that happened, and it was like I had so many people messaging me like, "Oh, hey, you, you messaged me earlier and said that I won." I was like, "Oh, no. that was some weird bot account." Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Stay away from them. Mm-hmm. And I, it's a sorry, pain in the ass. I although I do I have had some success doing little giveaways on. YouTube, but just okay. the, like I did it with one of my speaker builds, I like I yeah, built yeah. two speakers, and I was like, I don't need one of these, so I just gave it away to to one of the viewers. But uh, yeah, I, I don't think the bots are on to <laughs> are on to YouTube yet in terms of scamming. But maybe they are. Maybe for bigger YouTubers, they might be. There is that YouTube comment scam yes. going on now, which we should also educate the people about that. Yeah. If you get somebody like replies to your comment or something and says they'll basically try to spam or like fake my account or Zach's account and their username will be a telephone number Mm -hmm. and then they'll be like, hey, text this number. I want to give you a prize or whatever. Come on, people. Come on. (laughs) Stop falling for that. It's a scam. I can't do anything about it unless I literally just sit all day and look at my comments. Not going to happen. Uh, so interesting thing. So you know how you ever get like a scam email from somebody and it's just like horrible typos everywhere. Yeah. It's like it's like basically illegible. Billion dollars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like three billion dollars and like billion is misspelled in five different ways. But. Um, they, I actually read that that's an intentional strategy that a lot of scammers employ so that they weed out anybody who could potentially catch on to the scam later on. So basically, they're just trying to get the, the I, I hate to be so crass here, but the dumbest of the dumb. Yeah. 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 So it's, uh, it's, it's, it works. The whole ecosystem of scamming online is kind of crazy. I feel like it's really ramped up in the last two, three years. I think since start of COVID, everybody's at home. I feel like scamming online really ramped up. How many times a day do you get scam calls on your cell phone? Oh, dude. So I have like the auto block thing. Yeah. Uh, Let's see. So in the last two days, I've gotten one, two, three, four, five, six. Six, okay, yeah. Right. It's, I, it wasn't always like that, was it? Like, I remember no. I used to get a scam call, like, once a month or something. Yeah. And it's yeah. so obvious now, like, at least on an iPhone, like, it'll come up, and, like, on the thing, it just says, scam likely. Yes. Like, yeah, as, like, the... Similar thing. Right. It's... People yeah. are a pain in the ass. But Do you know what else thing? is a scam? Oh, what's that? Printers. Print, oh, printer ink? Oh, I, I just, the whole printer industry. The whole printer industry. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. I once bought a printer because I needed to print one document. I was like, oh, for God's. Yeah, so I went, I paid like $80 for a printer. Like, I got the lowest of the low one because I just needed to print one document. I printed that one document. Then I went to use the printer like a year later to print another document. And it's I like, you're, you're out of say. cyan. <laughs> and I'm like, come on. Come on. You're like, I printed in black and white. Why the hell do I need I, cyan? I printed in black and white one time a year ago. Uh-huh. It's so annoying. You never um, get him to we, connect. I, yeah, I think we covered this actually on the podcast before. I went and got one of those uh, laser printers, the one that just uses toner. It only prints in black and white, yeah. and it just uses toner, and it, you can print like 6,000 pages with one toner cartridge. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what you got to do. Dude. I Who needs to print in color? It's not like I'm, I'm not doing school projects anymore where I had to like have like colored bar charts. <laughs> print out photos of, I don't know, pick your favorite celebrity, George Washington. <laughs> Washington. His teeth were made of wool. <laughs> As a woodworker, you should know they were made of wood. Yeah, oh, what's teeth. That? Is that is that from 
uh, ha- bi- happy Gil- happy daddy. No, big daddy. He's like, oh, I don't his know. His teeth were made of wool. There was a there was this meme that was like really early internet that was Washington Washington six feet tall. It was like a oh man, I'm not uh, familiar. I wish I could uh, be a ball. Huh? Yeah, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could pull up a YouTube and start playing it right now because I'm sure I could find it. You got to add that to our soundboard. I know, I know. You know, okay, so uh, here's something that I want to put out to our patrons and maybe just some of our regular listeners, too. Uh, what do you think about the idea of being a, bringing a producer on board? Just somebody who could be there, man the soundboard, and then maybe possibly pull up visual references. Um, because our new software has a functionality for a third party to join and be like our producer. So yeah. they could, like, run their own screen. They could bring up, like, visual references and stuff like that for us. So if any of our patrons or anybody else listening is interested, send us an email at offthecutpodcast at gmail.com and uh, become part of the show. We also, I noticed that on the super duper premium, whatever whatever one I bought, yeah, um, it has the ability to have people actually call in. Like a phone number? I don't know. Oh, okay, okay. So, yeah, we got to look into that. I mean, again, this is another reason why we need a producer to be like a phone screener. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Yeah. No, I'm all in for that. Okay. Uh, We got to do that. So, you got this video coming out. Yes. Giving away tools. Giving away tools. How long is this video? Tell me about it. Mm, it's like 15 minutes or so. It was... Perfect. Just, yeah, it was. it's a little bit on the shorter side. It's literally just like compilation of me going Love up it. to people. You know, like, okay, here's one person, here's one person done, here's one person done. Some of them were pretty funny. Like, one guy told me to basically F off. <laughs> oh, you had to have kept that in there, though, right? Oh, yeah, of course, of course, of course. Fantastic. <laughs> and you got to play it You got to play it up real big, like, whoa. <laughs> you know, like, well, I was just kind of shocked in the moment because I was like, I'm trying to give you something. And he was like, nah, get out of here. I was like, okay, all right, cool, man. <laughs> in all fairness, though, like at, at my home center, like you always get the guy walking down the aisles with the clipboard that goes, excuse could I interrupt yeah. you for a second? Yes. Dude, no. 100%. 100%. No. So I understand where he's coming from. I, wasn't, I didn't take it personally. Uh, but yeah, I think I even said to him, like, I'm trying to give you a free tool. He's like, no, get out of here. I was like, okay. Cool. Dude, I honestly would have probably had the same reaction because I would yeah. assume you go, hey, would you like a free tool? And I go, yeah, sure. And then my initial react, like in my head, my instinct is I'm going to say, yes, I want this tool. And then mm-hmm. he's going to be like, okay, well, you know, do, are you currently using AT&T as your cell phone service exactly. provider? Exactly, yeah. There's, or sign up for my credit card or whatever the hell, right? right? Like there's there's always a catch. Uh yeah, so I get it. I get it. I, I definitely didn't take it personally, but it was just kind of funny. Right. Yeah. That should be good, though. I've yeah. got a. I just put a video out what a couple days ago, and I have another one coming out uh, on the twenty third. I noticed your last one's doing like really well. It's up to like a hundred thousand views Dude, in like eight days or something. I I don't know what is happening again, but I'm You're killing it with riding, the titles. <laughs> I just, it's, I just, what's the last title? Hold on. The last. I, I, I don't understand why people still do this. <laughs> Did I do that one again? No, no. It's, it's something very similar though. It's, um, I don't understand why more people don't know this or something like that. Oh, it's, I don't know why more people don't do this. Yes. Like what yes. is awful title for a video? I mean. 117,000 in five days. Wow, it's gone up even since I. Uh, oh, one hundred twenty thousand. Never mind. Like, what oh, in the damn. hell? Yeah, that's awesome, man. Oh, um, I'll take it. Uh, oh, I had something. Oh, I can't remember. I had something else to say about that video, but now I can't even remember. Damn. So, oh, I was gonna say it's. I saw that it's like thirty nine minutes long, which is why I haven't watched it yet. I don't blame you. <laughs> um, is it the I is, is it the dining table video? No. Oh, <laughs> I'm putting damn. that one out yet. <laughs> That's the one I'm waiting for. <laughs> That's my longest one. So the one I just the one I put out last week was the floating nightstand, and it was okay, 39 okay. minutes. But okay. the dining room table is 44, 45 minutes, and that's before I have a sponsor in it. So it's gonna be a long video. Oh, I, I gotta dude. get some popcorn ready for that one. Yeah, you're gonna want to 
watch on a transcontinental flight. <laughs> so uh, let me ask you this. How is the... What's the watch duration like on the super long video? Let's see. Is it bananas high or... Um, it says... It is... Average view duration is 12 and a half minutes. Okay. And the retention is 33%. Okay, I don't know what the hell the difference between... Well, I guess that's just like the percentage of... 13 minutes would be 33%, right? Because that's a 39-minute yeah. video? Yeah. Yeah, the the YouTube math is always a little fuzzy that way, but interesting, interesting. Yeah, so... Yeah. It's, Sweet, man. It's working, but... Yeah, yeah. So now I, I did the thing that I regret... Well, that I looked least forward to doing, and I know you've done it. The coveted awful stupid video game ad spot oh <laughs> wow, which yeah. one which one it's called hero wars dude it's so funny i literally just watched another youtube video earlier uh-huh. today with that same spot yeah it was from december 20th to december 23rd what were the, was their launch date whoa that's dude, so tight but i guess you bad. had the video you ha- did you play the game no, I didn't play the game. Did you even try it though? Well, I had to take like a a couple second clip of me like holding my phone in my hands. Yeah, but you're just oh, I see. Okay, okay. Yeah, so like I downloaded the game and I immediately deleted it. <laughs> but, I tried playing the Raid Shadow Legends game when they did oh, the sponsorship. I played for like you know like five minutes and I was like, I don't understand how people enjoy this, but it. They must have a high return on investment because uh, no. their uh, no. budget is like non-existent. They're yeah. like, oh, yeah. that amount, <laughs> no problem, no problem. So, yeah, it's uh, it's it's interesting. I don't know who plays it, and I'm speaking as somebody who enjoys playing video games. Like, yeah. I'm not like anti-video game or anything, yeah. but the mobile games, I've never once had a mobile game on my phone that I've enjoyed. A Grand Maybe Theft Auto. Angry. But that's still, like, I'd rather play that on a PlayStation or whatever. True. That's and true. Maybe Angry Birds. I, I remember enjoying Angry Birds when it first oh, came yeah. out. Do that's you remember good. some of those, like, original iPhone games? Or iPhone, not even iPhone games, like iPhone apps. Oh, Doodle Jump? Do, oh, I never played Doodle Jump, I don't think. Oh, is this just dude that just, all he did was hop? Okay. And you had to drag him across the screen to try to jump on one platform and then make it to the other and, like, see how high you can go? It's good nice. Game. There was, uh, I remember one that made your screen look like a cup of beer, and then as you tilted oh, it, the beer would like come God. out. They also had a Zippo lighter one that you could just yes, like, 100%. that was like OG. Like people are like, I don't know what to do this whole app thing, but I'm just gonna try something and see if it works. Right, and that would be like the top app would be like the beer glass. Exactly. Yeah, it's like that's how easy it was to chart back on the the app store back in the day. Have you ever thought about making an app? I have, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I don't know what I would ever do, though. Like, uh, I think one great app out there. Have you ever heard of Feet Finder? (laughs) (laughs) Eric, I I, I keep telling you, you can't talk about your fetishes on the show. Oh, (laughs) sorry. That's that's a legitimate thing, though. You can sell pictures of your feet on there. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure. (laughs) (sighs) What's another good app? Uh, did you ever have a line rider? No, what's that? So it was a little dude on a sled. Oh, or I like, like this already. Yeah, like sled, toboggan, whatever you want to call them. Mm-hmm. And you zoom out, and it's uh, just a white space. And you take a line, and you just like draw like a track. Okay. So the idea is to make like the longest and coolest track you possibly can mm-hmm. without the guy like falling off the track or whatever oh, okay. so it's, a, okay. it's like a side scroller game yes i think i understand how this would work interesting interesting it's a good game. yeah 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 it's good I, game. uh shout out to the original cell phone game snake oh yeah <laughs> oh, i used yeah. to play hours of snake in high school <laughs> Oh, it's like it your little flip dumb. phone. And you're like exactly. Oh, dude, it was pre. It was pre flip phone. It was like a candy bar phone. <sighs> better days. Better days. Better days. Mm. Rock and T nine. Ooh, baby. Well, <laughs> I think we're a half. We're thirty five minutes in. Mm-hmm. What do you say we talk about some woodworking? 
Oh, no. Why would we ever do that? Should we, should we do that? <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Uh, what do you got for me? First off, I'm going to jump in the live stream. Anybody, no questions in there. Don't see any question marks. Okay. All right. Okay. We're back. Uh, what do you, what's like your next thing you're looking to build or any workshop upgrades? I know that we had talked uh, a couple weeks ago about how you were thinking – that you needed to spend money on a tool. Did you end up getting anything? No, I did, and I kind of took your advice. I was like, if if I knew I needed to upgrade anything, I would already like I would know what I needed to get. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there were a couple little dust extraction things. I think we'll see how I do over if I have any time over the Christmas holidays. Mm-hmm. Um, I would like to work. I'd like to get like a proper router box. I'd like to upgrade like some of the creature comfort stuff in my shop. Like I'd like to do new uh, drop down plugs. Like I have plugs that hang from the ceiling that I yeah. can just grab and pull down. But whenever I go, they're all broke. They each one has three ports on it, and I would say the over under of me plugging uh, the plug into like a bad not working port is about fifty fifty or about five hundred right now. So yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I also have. Uh, I'm working on another little mini computer project here. Ooh. So this is this is half of it. People in the live stream can see this right now, but it's uh, basically. So what this company does is this Chinese company. They take really powerful laptop hardware and cram it into like an incredibly small case. So okay. I'm going to build this thing, and then I'm going to make a mount for it that goes on the back side of my TV, and then it'll be like a little game console slash home theater nice. PC that's basically completely invisible so that's uh that's something i'm gonna be doing over the next like week or so when i get a little bit of time off i like that honeycomb pattern that you have on the back that allows the airflow to go in yeah so uh it's not in there right now but i'm gonna put a big f off fan here and then there's also a matching honeycomb that goes on this side and then there's a big fan that goes there and it's just gonna cool the hell out of it and then there's also like a honeycomb pattern that repeats the whole way around the perimeter in uh, a clear acrylic that looks slick oh was that what you were texting me about the other day exactly so i bought some of that glue the glue uh what was it called um it's like Ac- mm. Acrolate cement or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it's a special type of glue that's supposed to, when you gl- join two pieces of acrylic, clear acrylic, it's supposed to maintain that clear edge. Yeah. So we'll see. I, I still haven't cut the acrylic yet, so I don't know if it works or not. Well, I've-, I've seen other people do it. Like I, my recommendation came from uh, Dave Pachuto from Make Something. He does a lot of like acrylic and his stuff. Okay. And he always just uses that little clear stuff. You like stick it together and it's. So you, seems like it's permanent. I don't all know. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to trying it. I've also heard that you can take a torch to the edge of acrylic just to not to get it. To polish it. To polish it, yeah. Instead yeah. of like sanding it and like doing a million layers of polish, just a quick little with the torch apparently works pretty well. I'm going to experiment, try a few different things, see, see what happens. That's the whole acrylic thing. Mixing acrylic with wood to me is a very interesting concept. I've never yeah. tried it. Well, never. You're never too old, Eric. I know. <laughs> what would what would you? I've never seen you do like any electronics or anything incorporated into a build of yours. You're right. Are there, are there any? Is there anything? Does that interest you at all? Would you ever like to do that? Yeah, I. So I have an idea of, like I told you, I'm very interested in making a vanity, like a bathroom vanity. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it would be really cool to have like it floating so it doesn't have a toe kick. It's yes. floating off the wall. And then mm-hmm. underneath it, you put some like very like low wattage LEDs. Yeah, that just almost underglow. Operate. Yeah, but like yeah. real, real subtle. Yes. I think that'd be cool. Yes, you definitely um, don't want to have it be like, oh my god, I'm in like, I don't know, I'm in a nightclub or something right now. Right. Yeah. But I think that would be cool, as I've got to imagine they have apparatuses that you can plug those into mm-hmm. that could make them almost like a night light, so like it only yeah. comes up at certain times, or oh, like if the idea. light is off or something. Yeah. I don't know. Well, uh, here's how you could do it if you wanted to. So yeah. they make, like, wall switches. Uh, I mean, it would probably involve running a new... Which you probably wouldn't want to do this in your apartment. No, this would 100% be, like, when we have a house. When you have a house, yeah. So you could run... Um, they have these little motion detector light switches. Yeah. So you could just put one of those on the wall in your bathroom. 
and then run that so that it motion activates this little kick light and then yeah that'd be cool yeah i like i honestly love the idea of the motion activated lights especially in like places like your um like say if you had a walk-in food pantry yes yeah 100 percent. like it's gonna if you have to flick a light switch to walk into your pantry you're never gonna do it right yeah yeah you're always gonna open it it's always gonna be dark you're always gonna be like is this the sugar is this the salt and then you won't know until you eat the casserole and it tastes like sugar right (laughs) but you're in the pantry for such a short period of time yes that like having a motion activated switch in there is perfect Yeah, they make little um, door jam switches. It's like oh. a switch that you like put on top of the door jam, so you can set it up so that as soon as the door comes off the jam, then it activates a switch. Really? Yeah, yeah, and you can do the same thing in cabinets too. There's all sorts of little like cabinet switches. So as soon as you open a cabinet door, oh. yeah, uh, my dad like, did that. He actually did that. He's got like a pretty cool like media center or like a record player storage thing and like as soon as you open the doors where the records are a little light comes on in the cabinet Ooh, man you're getting me jazzed i'm definitely adding those sorts of electric electronics to things what about acrylic you got any uses for acrylic in your life (sighs) i mean now so you're putting me on the spot now i can't think of anything you know be cool and i'm just thinking out loud here is some dust extraction stuff for your workshop that was acrylic. Like, imagine your router box was made out of Ooh. acrylic. Might be kind of cool to see all the like the dust yeah. and stuff flying through it. Not, I know. not functional in any way, but kind of cool. Oh yeah, I mean, hell, I would sit there the whole the whole time and just watch the dust go. I know exactly. that. Uh, oh, Clearview Cyclones is a brand that makes dust collectors, oh. and they make clear ones. So, mm-hmm. dude, I would just feed boards through the planer all day and just watch the dust go. Oh, yeah. So satisfying. Speaking of cool dust extractors, I saw Christy from Oak Hill Millworks got uh, one of the Harvey dust Harvey's? extractors. Yeah. And it was massive. It was so big, I couldn't believe it. I mean, all dust extractors are quite big, so... Um, but you, it's lower than a workbench, so you can build a workbench on top of it. On top of it. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. Okay, okay. I like that. But I just, I was, because I was looking at it on the website, and I thought it was like, I just, sometimes it's hard to get the scale of things from a website photo. Yeah, it's what, like three by three by five or six or something? Yeah, like, something like big. that. Yeah. Like, she was sitting on it in her video. Right. <laughs> it's a funny video, but uh, yeah. Uh, no, I definitely want to get one of those. Uh, I'm still waiting on my table saw. I mm-hmm, haven't gotten mm-hmm. that table saw from them yet. So, well, Is that something we should talk about in the after show? No, no they're fine. Okay, okay, okay. They're good. We uh, we aired that grievance and cleared that one up a couple weeks ago. But okay. there is something else I do need to um, clear the air about. But we're going to clear the air on the after show. After show? Okay, makes mm-hmm. sense. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to, what else could you do with clear acrylic in the workshop that'd be cool? Maybe, like, again, back to the router table, like, if the, you know, the, like, the router table lift, the plate that goes on top of oh. it, if that was made out of clear, it gets scratched up, which would be Yeah, but it'd be downside. slick as hell. That would look so freaking cool. Or, uh, oh, people do those zero clearance inserts for their table saw. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, I gotta go, okay, I'm gonna write some stuff down. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta order some acrylic and get cutting. Mm-hmm. This is a whole video. Cool uses for acrylic. Yeah, yeah. I like that. I like that. The only problem... What am I trying to say? The only problem with acrylic is it definitely scratches easy. Yes. I wonder if you could mitigate that with some of those coatings that we talked about. I don't think so. Those nano coating things? Yeah, it's probably not strong enough to actually hold up in a shop environment. But well, I if you tried to remember, if you tried to get something sharp, you might split the atom and blow That's your right. whole sh- shop well, to smithereens. Just, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I haven't tried that stuff. I saw um, Cam from Blacktail just came out with his own version of it. Oh, but really? Even on sale, it was like hundred and thirty dollars for like Ooh, a bottle. That's, that's pricey. That's but a little. also, like, think of, like, Rubio Monaco, right? Like, it's True. bananas expensive for that bottle, True. but it's, like, foolproof and just works every damn time. I would spend that money yeah. every single time. Yeah, if it works, it works. It's it's tough to... I would not be the first, you know, guinea pig, so to speak. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I need to see somebody else, like, make a video about it, so... 
but if you're also, looking for video ideas. Yeah, I know. But also, <laughs> like, why don't you and I just buy it? Because, like, worst case scenario, make content out of it, and we can True. write it off. Like, True. Eh, that's a good point. That's a good point. Do you put any sort cheap. of, like, spray coating on your uh, on your table saw? I put the cheap, like, Johnson's Pace Wax on it. Yeah, move exactly. On with my yeah, life. me too, essentially. <laughs> I like to say that I treat my tools well, and I maintain them mm-hmm. okay. Yeah, I, I'm not overly rough on my tools, but I'm also not one of these people who's like, after every use, I polish it, and then oh, like God, I put it away no. perfectly for next time. I just, I'm not uh, I'm not overly rough on them, and I maintain them like kind of well, I guess. Yeah. I, as long as I look at it and like it's functional, like if my t- saw yeah. like rusting, yes, I yeah. would take care of it. Yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't polish it every week. Yeah. Oh, you know what's uh, being annoying? So my saw stop has this issue, and it's partially my fault because I don't have the dust extraction configured correctly. In you know, the saw stop has the big square base, and yeah. then the, the, the dust extraction inside. Yeah. Yeah, the dust extraction ports down at the bottom. Yeah. Um. So there's this flexible hose that's supposed to go inside yeah. from the like saw caddy, I guess you might call it, down to the dust extractor port. Uh-huh. I'm an animal, and I've been running it without that for a while. <laughs> what? <laughs> Dude, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> so the dust extraction oh, doesn't God. work that well, and the insides are, are pretty dusted up at this point. Oh, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> and the gears. So there's like, um, what do you call that? Like a... Uh, uh, the tru- like a sp- trunnion? Trunnion, yeah. There's some sort of like spiral gear system. Who knows? Uh, who knows? There's like compacted dust in uh... the bottom of the gear. So like the last, I can't lower it all the way and I can't, uh, you know, I can't bevel it all the way. So it gets to like 44 degrees, but it will go to 45 because there's just too much compacted yeah. dust in the gear, so I do have to take it apart, and I do have to uh, give it a good thorough cleaning. Give get like a little like uh, brass brush, a little yes. bit of that like dry Teflon spray. Exactly. exactly. I actually right. I did it once before, and I got it working perfectly. And I was like, I should really put that hose on. <laughs> do you have the hose? Somewhere, somewhere. I'm sure. <sighs> Come on, man. <laughs> Got to do that. Well, at least yours gets captured in the base. On my saw, the little dust collector thing is just this like piece of plastic. Yeah. That if it has any pressure, it just opens up. So like nice. a quarter of the dust just goes straight on the floor. It's great. Nice, nice. Great I mean, saw. the dust extraction works relatively well for a table saw. So it's like it's low on my priority list of things to do. But I didn't, I know I do need to do it. When you got your saw stop, mm-hmm. did you get that like swinging overarm? dust collector thingy yes i believe i have it somewhere in a box i i I found it recently i was like oh i should probably install that Um, so you've never used it well it connects to um like it's also the what do you call that thing like the anti-kickback the not the riving knife but there's like a the little paw thingies that like yeah it's connected to those and i found those super annoying to use yeah. Uh, so I, it's all one system. So I was kind of just like, "F this!" Like, let me just use it like a normal, yeah, um, a normal table saw. Um, but it's also got that added extra dust extraction. So I need to set up like a splitter from because my dust extractor comes down as like a six inch pipe. Yeah, and then it reduces to four and goes into the base of the thing. Mm-hmm. So I would need to put like a Y on there so that it reduces to four inches, and then it also reduces to two inches, and then comes up. And I've never found a Y like that's also a reducer that doesn't look horrible. Uh, um, so yeah, I need to I need to figure something out, but I I haven't got around to it. Story of my life, right? Yeah. So apparently on this new table saw that I'm getting, it has, you just plug your four inch port into the back of the table saw and then it, it splits it inside of the table oh, saw. Oh, that's okay. And then so, runs up above it. I mean, to be honest with you, I'm going to try it, but I have a very high likelihood knowing myself that it will last for about a day and then I will remove it. Okay. Here's the thing. If it works well to reduce the amount of dust, I would probably do it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, if but the the thing is, there's too many hurdles 
to me with the saw stop. There's too many hurdles to me because I'm not confident that it would work that well at dust extracting. Fair. But if it was all internal to it, I would give it a shot. And if it was still, if it was really good at dust extracting, then I would probably put up with a headache of having the thing floating above the blade all the time and being kind of annoying. That's fair. That would probably be worth it to me. That's fair. Uh, but yeah, uh, I know um, basically the entire Saw Stop company listens to our podcast. Yes. Um, so you guys, you got to do this internal splitting thing that apparently Harvey has worked out because that sounds like a great idea. Yeah. So yeah. I can't comment if it works well. I have to wait till I get my saw. Yeah. Supposedly, it's the the person in charge of that program has passed it on to the person who fulfills the orders and i have not heard anything so. okay okay well i'm curious to i mean it is coming up on christmas so right. might that's just be why kind of... i was gonna wait till the you know second third week of january and then be like yo yeah. what's yeah, up they, they might just be phoning it in for the rest of the year um i don't blame them yeah <laughs> <laughs> I had another question about that table saw, but now I can't. Is there the, any cool features with it, like outside of this? The uh, Harvey thing? Yeah. Uh, well, it's a, supposedly, like, the tabletop of it is, like, really big and, like, oversized. Okay. Like, it's bigger than the saw stop professional. It's, like, more of the saw stop industrial size okay, one. Okay, that's cool. Are you going to so, have enough space to fit it? I have no idea. Is it modular? Like, can you, like, add sections and wings to it? Uh, Yeah. Yep. Okay, okay. Cool. So, cool. I don't know. We'll see. I also got the gold one. It's Ooh. the top of it, instead of cast iron, it's uh, titanium nitrite. I don't know. Sure. Yeah, I mean, formulas. you could have said anything, and I would have believed you. I would have been like, ooh, very fancy. Right. It's got a flux <laughs> capacitor on the top of yeah, it. Yeah, it's got unicorn feathers all over the interior, too. Right. And it's uh, it's gold, Instead That's of cool. silver. That's cool. So, yeah. yeah. I got the the router table that's going to be attached to it. The nice. router table dust box. Oh, yeah. And the sliding table saw attachment okay. on it, okay. too. Okay. Like the uh, no sliding that goes like off to the left? Like, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Like, it's kind of like a sled? Yeah. So you can like cross cut like a whole sheet of plywood on it, apparently. That'll be sweet. To be honest with you, I have no idea if I'll actually use it. But he what? asked me if I wanted it, and I said, like, sure. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Do they, uh, did they ask you to do anything? Like, they want you to do a video review or anything like that? Or just get it Organic out there? Organic placement. Nice. That's what I love. Those are the two sweetest words in the English language. But see, here, here's what happens, though. They're not paying me a dime. And look, we just talked about it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I'm almost more curious about it now. If I was like, oh, he's got to do a video on it, I'll just watch the video when it comes out. But Right. Yeah. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm actually going to do a video on it, and I think here's the title. Okay. I'm fine. It's either going to be. I don't understand I'm why finally, people do this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand why people use table saws. No. Yeah. I think it's going to be. I finally got rid of my table saw. Oh, nice. And it'll just be like me, like wheeling it out of the garage. Yeah. And so I, I think I'm going to start the video kind of talking about, you know, like I've been a huge proponent of table saws for three years. I started with this one. This was the down, you know, downfall of this one. So then I got this new one here, the downfall of it. And then I finally was like, F this. I'm done. I'm getting rid of this. Mm -hmm. So that'll be like the first half of the video. And then right after that, it'll be like. So the, to solve that, here's the, the new table saw that I got. But it yes. kind of like leads people in thinking yeah, I'm yeah. going to be like, I'm done with table saws forever, never, mm -hmm. ever using one. Mm -hmm. And I think that could potentially be good for engagement. Yeah, I think so. And you should also include some teases about how you might be converting to miter saws. Oh, that would be funny. <laughs> I'll, every once in a while, like look up in the rafters at that rigid miter saw and like quick yeah. zoom into it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh, that'd be good. Okay, I'm gonna write that down. You should have some like little puns that like allude to miter saws or something like that. Miter saws only, baby. <laughs> miter saw or die. <laughs> but I'm I'm working on that, dude. Ever since the the YouTube thing has been going so crazy, I I feel like I've kind of backed up for a second, and I'm like. I'm in more research mode right now. Right. Kind of researching what a lot of other people are doing and not copying them, but mm -hmm. looking to see 
what topics, what video styles yeah. have been successful for a lot of other people. Oh. And then try to kind of emulate thoughts, concepts, or ideas mm -hmm. into my own style. So that's literally what I've yep. been doing the past week. And that's it's, cool. That's smart. Very smart. It's it's frustrating because I want to go out in the garage and build something. Huh. But it's like I don't need to build anything right now. I have yeah. so many build videos yep. in the hopper. Yep. But it, it's weird, right? I feel like I've made this like slight change in the business where it's no longer about, ooh, what am I super excited to build? It's like, mm -hmm. how can I really grow this thing right now? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird. It's uh yeah, I mean it's uh I mean it's a good spot to be. It's nice to be able to take yeah. like step back and do that. The, I think the trick is finding the intersection of what works as a video and what you enjoy and that Absolutely. way you're not just making videos for the sake of making videos, right? You're still doing the stuff you want to do. Yes. But it's yeah, it's, but it's a it's a difficult difficult line to watch. Remind me in the after show RE uh stealing ideas cuz I have something that I want to I want to okay. talk to you about in the after, after show. After show T Stealing ideas. I got I got a grievance that I want to potentially bring up. Ooh, well, I, I'm I gonna bring that. it up, but I don't, I don't. I could be wrong about it, so we'll see. We'll see. The, I mean, this is the perfect time of year for a Festivus segment. I know. I know. You know, airing of grievances. I'm gonna mm -hmm. see at my family Christmas. Be like, would anybody like to air grievances <laughs> to each other? <laughs> that could get that could get bad though. I feel like that's depending on your family. That's a dangerous thing to say. We are a family where we have a couple people that I, I don't say this in a in a negative way. They just have very loud voices. Mm -hmm. So sometimes somebody can just be talking to you, but it comes off as if somebody's oh, yelling at you. I see. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if we were doing Festivus, it could get hot. It could get yeah, a little heated, a little yeah. bit. Uh, yeah. 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 Even without even realizing it might just get <laughs> Yeah. I don't think I would ever do Festivus with my family. That sounds like a effing nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Have a lot of angry people. Yeah, my, my family's all Irish and they're all drunk, so it's horrible. <laughs> you told me you, yeah. this is what you said. I loaned you a hundred dollars in nineteen ninety five and you'd never pay me back. <laughs> That Popeye's downstairs double charge me. <laughs> no, that's legit. That is unforgivable. That's a scam. That is once a scam. Once you've experienced that, you will never forget. <laughs> All right. I want to hear, well, well, as we're getting towards the end, I want to hear, Zach, what is your go-to Christmas, winter, holiday like beverage are you a cider are you like a mimosa guy what are we talking like a spiked i mean going coffee? back to the the whole drunk irish family thing okay. my uh, my grandfather used to make like just the most alcoholic eggnog that you've <sighs> it, yeah it was brutal but it was like it's there's a little bit of yeah, there's a little bit of, like, family tradition in that for me. So a nice spiked eggnog is, like, uh, my holiday drink. I have a thought, and this mm -hmm. might be a hot take on eggnog. Okay. I don't think anyone likes eggnog. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm on record as saying I kind of like it. But do you kind of like it, or do you just, like, feel like, I mean, you know, people typically drink this around the holidays. I should drink this. I mean, if it's getting me messed up, it's like it's okay. Yeah, like I can I can tolerate. It's good at hiding. It's good at hiding the flavor of booze. So, okay, but yeah, it's fair. not like okay. You know, middle of July, I'm a, like I need a good, refreshing glass of eggnog right now. <laughs> I mean, eggnog is literally just like liquefied eggs, right? Is it? I honestly have no idea what's in it. All right, I gotta know. See, this know, is why yeah. we need a producer. We need like the guy that's like, oh, yeah. exactly, Here's exactly. What's so, off the cup podcast at gmail dot com. If you want to be the producer, send us an milk email. and eggs is literally what it is. But it's sweet, so there must be like sugar and stuff. Yeah, in there too. sugar, egg yolks, sugar, milk, cream, <laughs> uh, nutmeg. Why it's are like you five... laughing at cream? Well, is it's that, like cream and that... milk. It's like just like yeah. two different types of dairy. Oh, I thought you were. <sighs> Excuse me. I thought you were 
laughing at a su- su- sexually suggested oh nutmeg thing. Yeah, I was like, I was like that wasn't my best. But I'll take it. Yeah, egg whites, nut- nutmeg, bourbon, heavy cream, milk, sugar, and egg yolks. Egg yolks, really it's interesting. Disgusting. <laughs> I did notice I bought a carton of eggnog. And I was like, oh, it expires in like three days. And it's like, you know, like it's, it seems it. like it expires exceedingly quickly. Are you going to are you going to bring that into the after show? Uh, I think it's all gone. I think no. I all got drank at my Christmas party I had last week. No. That's fair. That's fair. Let's see. Well, I guess I want to share my drink. Mm, OK, Christmas. yeah, I'm a big. I think the one I'm going to do this year mm-hmm. um, is a whiskey sour. Oh, okay. So it's whiskey, mm-hmm. lemon juice, mm-hmm. and my my tie in here is with the eggnog. Yes, it's. I'm waiting. An egg white. Oh, okay. And simple syrup. Nice. So you, I like you that. You put it in a cocktail shaker, shake the living hell out of it. Frothy, right? Yeah, it's kind of foamy. Yeah. Pour it in a glass, a little dash of red wine on top of it. Oh, ooh, dash of red wine on top. Yeah. That's a nice little thing. Okay, so um, here, so. Uh, Sophie and I, we have our Christmas plans. We have Christmas Eve plans. Mm-hmm. Christmas Eve Eve. We're going to have like a little date night. We're going to go skating. Oh. We're going to walk oh. around the neighborhood. We're going to look at the lights. And we're going to each make some Christmas cocktails for each other. So, Hell yeah. Do you want me to my, send you this recipe? No, no, no. I've already got mine planned out. And okay. so this is, this is you know, like my second day after the alcoholic eggnog. Uh, I'm going to do a Christmas-themed dark and stormy. Oh, so Zach. dark rum, cranberry, lime juice, uh, ginger beer, maple syrup, and a little bit of simple syrup, oh. and uh, and some frozen cranberries in it, and then a little lime slice on top. You guys gonna make it to the ice skating? We'll see. We'll see. It's, it might be a bit <laughs> ambitious. <laughs> well, that sounds like a good time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well. Zach, I know last week I kind of hinted at something, but I wasn't 100% sure. Yes. So I got to come clean. Okay. It takes a really big, strong, (laughs) handsome man (laughs) to admit when he was wrong. Mm -hmm. And there was something that, man, damn near the last 40-some episodes of the podcast that I have vehemently despised and uh, expressed my distaste for. Mm -hmm. But I have to take that back. But I think I'm going to take it back on the after show. Okay, okay. And also the title of this podcast is the one where Eric gives up his racism. (laughs) <laughs> gives up his racism. Yeah, because you being vehemently against something, I assume you're talking about your deeply held racism. <laughs> no, that was one episode where I was talking about glue, and I accidentally... <laughs> you guys overheard me, and you're like, dude, what did you just say? Oh, I forgot about I like, that. I, I, said, I said glue, and you're yeah. like, mm, no. Oh, don't think so. But we let it slide. We marked yeah. the episode as explicit and moved on yeah. with our lives. Yeah. Well... We're going to head over to the after show. That's at patreon.com slash off the cut podcast. So if you want to hear about me, just, you know, I don't know, basically taking 40 some episodes worth of distaste back and admitting I was wrong, that that's what's going to happen at the after show. this week. I'm excited. All right. Well, everybody, as always, we appreciate you listening. Tell your friends about us. Spread the love on the podcast. because That's the only way this damn thing grows. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll see you. Next week? Are we going to have one on after Christmas, or, sh- or do we have to wait till the New Year? We'll talk about this afterwards, but okay. if you have time, then then I would like to do one. Yeah, yeah. I, I think okay. I should be good. I just didn't... Okay. I don't know what's going on with you. Yeah, no, I'll blow up my family. They don't need to see me. No. Yeah. Or they can but, join. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, you wouldn't want that. <laughs> Group, it'd just be a bunch of yelling. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Did you have something else you wanted to add before we uh, go to the after show? No, I just wanted to say, well, uh, yeah, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year, if we don't uh, if Happy we don't Hanukkah, see. Happy, happy Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa, I think I was, Diwali's end, ended. Dude, I was at uh, 
greeting card store with my girlfriend yesterday. I had Kwanzaa cards. I was like, I don't know anybody who celebrates Kwanzaa. And it's not like... Uh, I, don't, I don't know enough about it. I, I'm pretty sure Kwanzaa... Uh, and, okay, here's my conspiracy theory. I don't know that this is actually true, but I think it was... Crea- it's like an invented holiday to market Christmas to like the black community, essentially. I have no idea. I know nothing about it. Yeah. I don't know. But that's just that's my conspiracy theory, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> the eggnog? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, so conspiracy theories aside, everybody, we appreciate you listening. We, we will sure catch do. you next week or at the after show if you want to hear what I got to talk about. There we go. See you, everybody. Right. See you.